Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop, but we're not going to be in the shop for long because, well, there's a few things going on. There's a big excavator next door. They're knocking down barns and mobile houses, homes and things like that. So we're going to go riding. Mitch is behind the camera, so we're going to go up to Ioko and uh, we're, we're going to call this Trials Riding 101. I am not an expert rider, but I've been riding a little while. So I'll show you a few things that I know. I'm gonna put some fuel into the bike. And if you look over here, there's a new project in the shop. I bought a couple of, uh, of the Triumph Tiger Cubs yesterday. I used to own one when I was 16. Paid 125 bucks for it. Sold it for 175 a year later. And ever since then, I've kind of wanted one, so got a new bike in the shop. This is a 2018 a TRS. It's a 280. It's a really nice bike. It'll do a lot of things that I can't. So let's go have some fun today. We've been in the shop quite a while. Welcome, we're at Ioko and it's uh, hoping for a shady day, but that didn't happen. So here we are. I got my bike, got my safety gear, I got my, my gloves, my elbow protectors, my knee protectors, my boots, helmet, anything can happen out here. So you need to be safe. So I'm going to switch on the gas, gas is on, put the choke on, start the bike. The choke's a little hidden away, but it's right there. This is my tether, so if anything happens, it switches off the motor. <laughs> Riding a trials bike, I, I want to tell you just some real basic stuff so it's like another any other motorcycle you buy nowadays you got the throttle the brake the clutch rear brake and the shifter most of the time when you're riding a trials bike around on the trails or in a section you're only using first or second gear this is five speed but i'm not in third gear a whole lot mostly second gear and i've usually got one finger on the clutch and the brake. And there's some real simple exercises I'm going to show you. But first of all, when you when you ride the bike, you don't want to have your feet and your legs close because then you can't move the bike around. You always want to be out a little bit. You need to have a space. So it's not like riding a regular off-road bike. You always want your legs legs bent. And that's how you ride. You ride standing up. You notice there's no seat here. The only time we use the seat is when we have a rest and we're all sitting around on our bikes having a chat. Social distancing, of course. That's when we use the seat. Aside from that, you need stronger leg muscles because you don't sit down. So one of the first exercises I'm gonna show you is it's a figure eight. Basically, I'm, I'm turning on the bike full lock. It goes all the way to the lock. So I have to go really slow. I'm going to use first gear. And it's a combination of using the clutch and the rear brake. I'm using the clutch and the rear brake off each other so that I can, I can maintain a very slow pace. So I'll go around a couple times and then I'll stop and change direction. We'll see how that works. I haven't practiced up for this. I haven't ridden the bike for a couple weeks. I've been busy. Let's see what happens. Got to plug in my tether.
Okay, so you get the idea. This is not the easiest place because it's got lumps and bumps. It's a lot easier when there's lots of traction like asphalt, something like that. So, but even doing that, you can tell I'm a little out of breath because it takes energy and finding that control is not always easy. So, I guess we'll move on to the next step. When you go up a rock, you want to be like a cat. If you ever watch a cat jump onto something, it all happens at the bottom. All the energy, all the traction happens at the bottom, and then the bike takes you up. You can't start going up and then and then hop on the gas and expect the bike to get the traction and take you up something. So you want to put all that energy into the ground at the start. So we'll find something and uh, we'll go up a rock next. Okay, so this rock here, it's, I don't know, four and a half, five feet high. What I'll do is I'll go in, in second gear and I'll approach the rock and then I'll stop right before the rock and, and then I'll go up. Because it, it's easier if you roll up to it and then, then go over it. But if you don't have, have that momentum entering onto the rock, then you really have to get your traction going. So we'll try that. So this will be second gear. So what happened there, that worked fine. And then as I got about halfway up, I rolled off the throttle. Cause if I keep on the throttle, I'm gonna wheelie right off the end. In trials riding, everything is, well, a lot of it is the timing. When you, when you apply the throttle, when you let off the throttle. So I don't know if you see what's happening there at the bottom, when I'm just about to accelerate, I'm pushing down on the bike and that loads up the rear tire. It helps to get the traction. Air pressure on these bikes. It's a tubeless tire on the back. It's got an inner tube on the front, probably three pounds on the back, five on the front, something like that. In trials riding, we have what we call is a section. When you're in an event, it's called a trial trials riding. A section is where you have a red ribbon on the right, blue on the left, and you follow in and you don't want to put your feet down. If you put your foot down you get a dab, that's one point. So the rider with the least amount of points is often the winner, not always. So I like to ride as a, as a warm-up before the ride. I like to ride up this rock and come down here, make a shot turn and go up and around that rock there kind of like a little 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 mini section you might call it so I'll do that this will be first gear and probably the hard part is to come down here and and make the corner while you're still coming down right around the section And that was a clean. If you do a clean, you hold your hand like that. That shows that clean. One point, two point, five. That's the most points you can get, five. Whew. We've got a rock here. This, this one's a little bit larger. It's not, it's not huge. So I'm gonna go up this in, in, in second gear. And you really wanna be allowing the bike to move under you a little bit and if you get on the gas a little bit and the front end gets a little light that's sometimes good because you don't want the front wheel to hit a rock and 
move unexpectedly. So if the front end is light, that's better. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna come down over here and make it make a turn. Let's say this is the section. I go up there, come down here, and go up there. Just inform a little section. I use second gear to go up, and then when I come down here, I'm gonna be in first gear. So I'm shifting second to first. Okay, so you get the idea. It's nothing super challenging. I'm what's known as a sportsman rider. That's my class. Intermediate, same kind of thing. Up above me is advanced, expert, and champ. So in the scale of things, Charles Rider, I'm somewhere in the middle. Not an expert. I think we're going to cross the road now. And there's, a, there's some stuff over there which is a little bit more challenging. Let's do that. I wanted to talk about the clutch and the clutch lever. I use the clutch a lot. It's a one finger clutch. If my, if my finger gets tired, sometimes I use two, but mostly it's one finger. When I'm on a downhill, I don't use the engine as braking. I got, I got good disc brakes front and rear. So on a downhill, that clutch is in the whole way down. It's just the engine's idling. Sometimes I give the throttle a little bit of a blip. And then when I need to go somewhere, I let the clutch out. Sometimes if I'm going around a corner slowly, I'm slipping the clutch. But on a, on a trail, I've got the clutch in probably more than it's out. Most people, if they ride a, a, a street bike or something like that, the clutch is always out except for when they're shifting or starting out. On a trials bike, it's different. I use the clutch a lot, and it's fine because these these clutches they take all that. You don't. I've I've never changed a set of, of clutch plates in a trials bike. So we've got a little bit of a rock hill here. It's a little larger than the last one, so it's got some roots at the bottom. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna start right up close, but I'm gonna start back here a little bit, and then hit it hard in second gear you're going to hear the engine rev so i'll do that i'll turn around and i'll come back down On a downhill, you always, always keep your weight back. I've got my ass basically on the fender. You don't want to lock up your front brake because if you lock up your front brake, you can't steer. So it's a, a lot of back brake and easy on the front brake. That's how you do that. I've set up a little a little turn here so I have to come in between this large larger tree and the stump and then you see that rock right there I'm, I have to get my front wheel on the inside of that so what I want to do is when I come through here I'm going to be as wide as possible you always want to make your turns even though they're small and sharp you want to make them as wide as possible that gives you an advantage so I'm going to come wide. In, in a corner, you, you use what's known as outside weighting. My foot's on the outside of the foot peg, elbow up. And probably it'll be full, full lock to make that corner there. So let's just see what happens. Because I have to allow for my rear wheel to come on the inside here. So this will be first gear.
Okay, when I talk about outside waiting, it's not like that. See how I've got my foot on the outside of the peg? That's outside waiting. So it puts more weight on the outside of the bike and that helps to stop you falling into the turn. That's one of the, of the, of the common mistakes of someone that's just learning. You go in a turn and suddenly they fall in. Outside waiting, elbow up, that helps. We have a log here, so I want to tell you the technique of going over a log. It's called a double blip. What that means is, as I approach the log, I'll probably use second gear. I could use first, but I think I'll use second. I hit the gas enough to get the front wheel up, but not enough to go over the log. I want the front tire to hit the log hard enough right probably about there towards the top so that it compresses the forks when it compresses the forks it slows the bike down momentarily and it loads up the rear suspension that's when i hit the throttle for the second time that's the double blip and because the bike is now at an angle it shoots me over the log so i'll give it a shot We'll see what happens. Let's say you're on your, on your trials bike and you go down a very small trail and let's say there's a log across or it, it dead ends, you can pull a U-turn. You can swing the bike around. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's basically, I'd use first gear, throttle in the clutch, swing the bike around. Almost out of control, but that's the idea. You can do it left, right, doesn't matter. Second gear. Well, that is Charles Riding 101. I hope you got a little bit out of it. This is where I come on my Sundays. And uh, thanks for watching. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us a coffee, we'd appreciate that very much. And next week, we'll be back in the shop doing some more fabrication, machining, turning. Stay safe. See you next time. Bye-bye.